if I wanted that to look like it was on a tripod, I need to stabilize it. And since um, I, I believe it was uh, CS6, they came out with the warp stabilizer in After Effects. So this is also available there. They've enhanced it a little bit in CC. So I just go to my uh, Stabilize tab, which isn't visible right now. Uh, that would be my Tracker. So I come up to Window and then Tracker. And that throws it down there where I don't want it. I'm going to drag it up here so it's up in this tab. I like as much real estate down here as possible. I always try to keep that open. So I've got uh, some choices here, and we're going to look at all of them. Let me pull this out just a little bit because it looks like, there we go, we're cutting off the right side there. Um, we've got some choices for tracking, and we're going to deal with probably most all of these um, in this section. But right now I'm going to use the warp stabilizer. I'm going to click that because that takes a little bit for it to think about what it's doing. So here are my options with the warp stabilizer. It is a plug-in effect. So while it's analyzing the footage in the background, I can do other things. I can go over here, I can play with another comp, do other things. Uh, I don't have to leave the computer and go do the dishes or something. <laughs> you can do something in here. I just can't close the, the project, obviously. So um, we have this open in the effects uh, tab in here. and. It, you can see the progress of the, uh, the analyzation. So it's going to do that before it tries to do stabilizing. So we've got some options here. I'm going to go ahead and click this uh, detailed analysis button here under advanced, just because I want to get as much information as I can on this uh, particular piece. Now we do have some options here. Uh, if I wasn't panning left and right and I was just holding it still, I'm going to show you an example of that here in a minute too. Uh, but you can go from smooth motion to no motion. That means I would be locking it off like it was just sitting uh, stationary on a tripod. And that would you know, really freeze everything up. Now I've also got some other options here depending on how much rolling shutter I have by moving the camera, uh, how wide angle the lens is, or if there's distortion, lens distortion around the edges. Um, I can uh, choose uh, the subspace warp, which actually re-warps uh, the distortions that it perceives. Uh, if I just want to lock down the motion that is happening, any kind of rotation or positioning or whatever, I could just go to position, scale, and rotation. So once it's done uh, with its uh, analyzation there, we'll be able to see some of the results. Uh, some of the other items here for the um, bordering uh, by default, it is stabilize crop and auto scale. What that means is when it's stabilizing something, it has, uh, it has the ability to, to actually crop in everything that's stabilizing. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at uh, a, a still frame there, and your image is going to be moving all around inside it like this. So you'd be looking at a still frame, and your, your your image, well actually if you're stabilizing it locked off but you don't crop it, uh, your image itself will look stable but your, the borders are going to come crowding in. So it's going to be a really weird thing and probably be good to show that once, once it's done uh, analyzing this. Uh, show you what happens when you turn some of those off. Because those things, once it's done analyzing, it's pretty much done. It's not going to have to reanalyze anything unless I change uh, some of the major uh, settings for stabilization. So as far as cropping and that type of thing, can show you what that's going to look like if we turn that off. But by default, it's on that. Uh, synthesized edges is interesting. I've tried it a few times, but it is a little bizarre. Um, it kind of creates some strange stuff off to the side. So it crops less, and it might try to fill in, kind of like autofill in um, uh, in Photoshop, but it, it tends to tends to try anyway. So it's done with its basic stabilization here. So let's do a quick RAM preview. And I haven't changed any other settings. I just let it go to all of its defaults, and we'll see how well it did just with that. So a quick RAM preview. This preview is pretty quick. So just that alone 
did a pretty darn good job. You can see the reflection of my camera in the window there. <laughs> but I think that was pretty amazing. So if I want to see what it looked like before, I just turn off the effect because it's just an effect. And you can see that's the before. It's bouncing around a little bit. And it's moving, so that's our before. And this is our after. And that's just with the default settings. I didn't do anything else. I just said, warp stabilize, <laughs> boom. So if I wanted to smooth it more, which I really don't need to, I could uh, change my smoothness amount. If, I was really, if it was really crazy and jostling around, I was on a boat, or I was trying to do it while somebody else is driving or something, then, and I've done that, that's why I laugh, um, then you can, you, can you can tell it to smooth it even more. Um, if I uh, want to, let's see, if we just do stabilize only without any cropping and see how it plays back, if we see any of those edges come in, yeah, we're seeing some of the weird, oh, I see what's going on, because I have this other layer down there. Let's see it without that layer. So we just see black. So see what I'm saying? Stabilizing is working. You see those edges are coming in. And that's why it will crop. It'll crop in on your image a little bit, so it'll kind of zoom it up and, and bring it up. And I've had some where it's been, the stabilizers had to work so hard, I'm missing half of the image. And it's like zooming right into the center there. And then you're still seeing some distortion because you're only seeing like, you know, 30% of your original image. And it gets pretty crazy.